This lesson is a simple beginning portrait lesson, great for elementary students that are learning to draw portraits using basic shapes. So today we're working with drawing self-portraits. We're gonna begin with a vertical piece of paper and we are going to start with an oval shape. So looking at the top of my paper, I'm gonna put my one, two, three, four fingers and make a mark. I'm gonna put my one, two, three, four fingers at the bottom and make a mark. And then I'm gonna do three on the side and three on the side. So right here is giving me some space for a good size head and space around it for the hair and down below for the neck. So looking at it, when I think of a face for someone, the oval for someone's head is kind of flat at the top and almost like a V for the chin at the bottom. So I'm gonna go light in my pencil, trying to get that oval head shape, kind of flat. You don't have to hit your marks, but you want it somewhere where you used your finger marks to get what you think would be the good start for a head. So when I look at the shape of my head, I have what looks like an oval down here. You can see it kind of goes in like a wide V for the chin and then a little bit flatter at the top. If you are trying to create a specific portrait of someone, you'll want to look specifically at their head shape. Maybe it's more round, maybe it's longer. But if you're doing just a headshot, you want it to take up most of this paper and using the fingers will get you a good measurement size. Then you can take your eraser and go back and kind of erase those little guide marks once you have your measurement. You're gonna take your pencil and make a vertical line and a horizontal line very lightly to divide the face into four quadrants, four sections. This halfway mark is gonna tell us that everything above is going to be our eyes, our eyebrows, and our forehead. Everything below is going to be your nose and your mouth. So starting on the horizontal line to make my eyes, I'm thinking that I both want them in the middle. And on this horizontal line, I'm gonna have the top half of the eye, and on the bottom of the horizontal line will be the bottom half of the eye. When you think of an eye shape, it's like an almond shape, a football shape, an oval shape. Now, again, you can look at the person that you're trying to draw a portrait of, as a guideline, they might have eyes that are closer together. They might have bigger eyes. They might have eyes that are flatter. But you're going to look at your reference photo if you are doing that and try to get that shape the same on both sides. Then you're going to do the same on the bottom half. Now once I have my two oval shapes, I can erase the horizontal line that's going through the middle of it. Erase the horizontal line on the side, I no longer need that. And don't worry about right here in the middle. Now the shape of your actual eye, the color, brown, blue, green, it's going to be like a U or two parentheses almost inside the eye. So you don't draw the whole circle because your eyelid is covering the top. So again, getting that two parentheses or U and then having my eyelid cover the top. Now, Inside, there's a little pink and then the round of the ball 
of your eye. So your eyeball is round inside your eye socket. And so you have this little detail right there. Repeating on the other side, just to get that round white shape of the eye. And now inside the eye is your pupil. So that's going to be black. And black. Now our eye allows light in and allows it to reflect. So you might want to think if you're going to have a section of light coming in, you can do it as a circle, you can do it as a square. And then I always kind of lightly go around and add my pencil. And then again, if I was using colored pencil or um, even paint, I can get that color later. Um, on there and if you are using just pencil you can always take your finger and soften the lead of the pencil to get some value in there of light and dark and going back and kind of erasing that little bit of light if you need to Okay, now that I have the inside of the eye detail started, I'm gonna start adding above the eye. When I think above the eye, there's always kind of a, just a light line. It's maybe a pencil's thickness above it, just to show the crease. You know, we have that extra skin that allows us to close our eyes. That's kind of important. And then above it, we have our eyebrows. Your eyebrows are going to begin at the inside part of your eye. They're gonna actually have some hairs that go straight up and then it curves and comes down to the, around the outside of the eye. It is a rule of, it's a kind of a good rule to say at least a finger space above your eye is where your eyebrow would begin. So knowing that I'm gonna come from the inside point and make a straight line, and then I know, okay, if I have a finger space, I'm gonna go vertical and then kind of follow straight. And they're short little hairs. Look in the mirror, look at your reference photo. Some people again have thicker eyebrows and more hair. Some have thinner eyebrows. So that's where your unique portrait will come in. Repeating on the other side, about a finger space, lining it up with the inside. A couple hairs that are vertical, then they start to go straight across, and then down to curve around the eyebrow. Now we have the space above here that will be all forehead. We will leave that. Now we can go into the eyelashes. The eyelashes you want to be careful or cautious about. When you do eyelashes on someone, they can make you look girly. So if you're working with a male's portrait, you might want to be very cautious on the eye shape and the eyelashes. Maybe not do them at all. It's your choice. When I think of eyelashes, a lot of people want to make them vertical and straight up and down. They actually are hair that come underneath the eyelid and curl up. So you're kind of almost thinking of an upside down candy cane that's 
curling under and up. And it's a suggestion. You don't have to get crazy with it and do, you know, a lot of them. But they're kind of curving out diagonally to the paper. It's always good to kind of step back and look at if things are kind of symmetrical, maybe something needs a little adjustment, you know, take a pause and look. Below the eye, you can do a few eyelashes as well. You don't need many. And they aren't as long. Keeping it simple. So you've got your eyes, your eyebrows, Next, we're gonna work on the nose, which is vertical, on the vertical line. So thinking of my face, I know I'm gonna have my lips here and my nose here. So my nose on that vertical line is going to be a U. And I'm thinking that it's, you know, everyone's nose is different, but just in general, we have a curve for the tip of our nose. Now, again, looking at your reference photo, looking at your portrait of your person, is their nose wider, is it skinnier? Then everyone has a bridge to their nose, which goes all the way up to the eyes, and that's just gonna be two lines. Most um, will be a little bit thinner and fit in between there, but again, some might come out a little bit wider. For the sides of your nose, I like to think of them like parentheses or curves. I don't usually draw the circles where my nostrils are. It looks like a pig. So I just kind of think about curving around and kind of connecting those curves, maybe leaving a little space. So I'm kind of going around where the nostrils would be. And then sometimes you can get a little shading if you're, you know, a higher level with that detail to get the nose popping up. As you know, your nose pops out from your face. Your face isn't flat, so you're trying to create that three-dimensional shape on there, which is difficult to do. So that can come in again with like some blending um, if you want to do that with your pencil or keeping it simple. As I said, this is, you know, um, an elementary portrait so just kind of getting some basic shapes. Now I can erase that vertical line. And work on my lips. With my lips, I have a finger space below my nose and then right here underneath it is really where my lips are kind of kind of start. You can even stick your finger underneath your nose and it should kind of touch the top of your lips as a measurement tool. So I know my lips are going to begin here and your lips the, are very difficult to do. In my opinion, lips are the hardest for me, but underneath my nose, this curve kind of follows to the curve of my lips. So I know this is gonna kind of curve up just a little. And then it's almost like an M to curve down. And then there's that curve on the bottom. Be very careful with it, keep it thin. Uh, and we always talk about the greater than and less than signs on the side because it, the lips get skinnier on the side, they get thinner on the side, and then they're fuller up at the top. Looking at the bottom where my chin is, I know I want to keep some space for my chin. So I'm going to, on that vertical line, make a mark where I know the bottom of my lips are going to go. And then you can say, hey, that's not enough chin for my person, um, and move it up if they have very thin lips or if they have fuller lips, you know, again, use that reference photo. So I'll move mine up just a little. And then thinking, okay, my bottom lip's a little bit fuller. 
and then I'm gonna go out and go out. And I do just a slight curve up on the out to give it a light smile. And then kind of bringing that to connect it, again, thin, thinking thin. And you really have to look at a photo because some people might have a flatter lip on the bottom. Some might have a fuller lip. And so you're just working on that bottom of the lip shape. And then the top, same thing, it's gonna come in thin here and then kind of connect up to that curve. It's gonna come in thin and connect into that curve. If you're working on a little bit of value shading, knowing that the outside parts are a little bit darker, they go back further. When you have your lips, then you can erase that vertical line completely. From here, your ears, if you use your own hand to measure, your top of your ears go to your eyebrow and the bottom of your ears go to about your nose. So thinking about that, I'm going to make just kind of a mark there. And it seems so weird to me because it seems very big ears. And I know I have all this fabulous detail inside my ears, but they're flat against the back of my head. So I usually try to say make, you know, a little kind of V there and just think of it as, you know, a flat shape against the head. And you can make kind of a curve inside of it. Again, look at your reference photo. Some people have bigger ears, smaller ears. If you are drawing a portrait of a woman, um, maybe their hair in that portrait is covering their ears. Everyone's different, that's what makes us special. Maybe they have earrings in there. Again, you've got that V above and below where that ear is. You know, it's, uh, it's thin and flat. You don't want to have it round like a monkey ear. And it should be probably thinner than your pencil. Now, thinking of hair. Hair can be challenging. There's wavy hair, there's short hair. Even the males that have short hair, it's going to start coming from the sides and then curling up. Um, most female hair and even male hair will come to the up, um, down below on the forehead. This is the top of your head here. And if I touch the top of my head, I can feel that I have hair below the top of my head. So whether you think, okay, it's going to be parted, you know, and then think about the part. Is it parted in the middle? Is it parted on the side? Is it coming, you know, down here? Are there, you know, do they have facial hair? Um, and looking at them as individual pieces. When you're thinking of it, are they short pieces that you're trying to create? Are they vertical? Are they long and going down? And then you're gonna create that length. So, you know, you're adding that hair and building it up on top of the head. And then when you look at that reference photo, is there an area where it's lighter or darker? I'm not looking at anything, I'm just kind of adding with you. So you could have maybe a bun on the top of the hair, you could, you know, keep building it down. You know, is it getting longer? So every time if I'm getting longer, I have to grows from the top of the head and comes down. Now as I start bringing it down, I need something to bring it down to. So I'm gonna pause here and think, I have a neck, I have shoulders. So bringing in my, to my jaw, your neck should probably be about, you know, maybe four fingers, three fingers, depending what looks natural um, with your person. 
and then you can have your shoulders kind of going out um, and then thinking what they're wearing if you want to add a collar or something unique to them but you could do the simplest thing by making a curve here just to show that indeed there is clothing on that line really kind of changes it up now I can work on continuing the hair as the hair past the shoulder length and adding that In the end of your portrait, you really want to take the time to look back at your reference photo to find characteristics that are unique to your person, whether it's the hair, the eyes, nose, or mouth. Finish up with those details.